Hey everyone, this is a video I've been wanting to make since number file started really. Because when you watch football, or soccer, if that's what you want to call it, on the TV, I'm always amazed by the number of statistics and numbers they're able to throw at you during the game. How do they do that? Who's recording it? So what I've done is spent a couple of days at a company called Opta, who collect statistics from various sports, including soccer. Now in this film I want to give you some idea just how much information they collect for every kick, every header, every miss kick, everything that happens on the field during a game of soccer. To do this, I've chosen just one kick as an example, and I thought seeing we're choosing one, we should make it a special one. So the one we're doing is a kick by a guy called Andre Iniesta in the 2010 World Cup final, and it was the kick that won the game. It was the scoring of the winning goal in a 1-0 victory against Holland. Now unfortunately, due to copyright law, I can't show you the goal, but it kind of looks something like this. Just like being there, wasn't it? But to a statistics expert, especially one from Opta, the goal looks more like this. So enough from me, here's Sam talking you through the anatomy from a numbers perspective of the goal that won the last World Cup final. For me, I obviously see it as well and I enjoy it, but we, when we collect the data, I also see it as a not just numbers, but a set of um, data, basically. And this is the details of every shot in that World Cup final. So that was all the shots in the game, and we're going to look at just in detail about Andres Iniesta's, about the winning goal, or the only goal. The key stat, the key number for, for us, in this case, is number 16. It's completely random, but for us, that's what a goal is. That's If it's an event 16, then we know it's a goal. So for you, 16's a big deal. 16 is the magic number in football. For In Opta football, 16's very important. When you're walking around the street and you see like number 16 on a house, do you yeah. think goal? Do I think goal, yeah. And then you've got um, number one is, is pass for me. So that's the one I see all the time. So, but yeah, there's, uh, you, you do come to think about when you're watching a game you'll think about it in the way that the guys collect it and the way that it looks in the database which is a mixed blessing. 13 is a, a miss so if you get it off target um, what else is there off the top of my head? 3 is a, a dribble so it's quite, quite a fun, one of the more exciting things that can happen. So we know it's a, a goal, we know it's number 16 we can see when it happened in the fourth period so that's the, the second period of extra time the fourth sort of overall period of the game when it happened towards the end we know this is his ID, so I know this is Andres Iniesta, one, two, two, three, seven, and the team that took the shot, obviously, was Spain. So outcome one, in some things that we collected, there's obviously whether it was a good thing or completed or not. Obviously, with a goal, we know it was completed, so it's outcome one. The most crucial bit of information, besides the fact that it was a goal, is where it happened. So these are our coordinates for where it happened on the pitch. I can kind of show you what. Not a 962.3 looks like. Let's see your drawing skills. Yeah, well. really terrible. This is why I do maths. Oh dear, it's all already gone wrong. And the 60 yard box. The goal is probably about, about here. It's going to go about here. About 9 goes down to about there. 62.3 tells me it's over here. This is 50 in the middle. So I know 62.3 is somewhere out here. There's an authentic recreation of Iniesta. I'll do him with one little strand of hair because that's about all he's got. So. We've got, that tells us something about it, but there's obviously a lot more that happened as to why it was a goal. So, oh, what have you called up now? So, so here we've got sort of the sub aspects of the, the shot. So on my extra data, I can see the goal, where it went on the goal, the Y and Z coordinates. So these are the goals. So he stuck it about here. He stuck it the other side of the goal and he went, it went not very high off the ground. So he probably stuck it around about here. We had before that he took the shot there. We now know it went pretty much in the bottom corner, not quite, not quite tucked in, but certainly to the side of the keeper. I know it was assisted and that it was an intentional assist. I know it went low to the keeper's left, which is, makes sense, given that he shot it from over here and we know it ended up over here. It went with one bounce, he hit it with his right foot, hit it on the volley, uh, and it came from a counter-attack. And I also know that the, the keeper touched the ball, although I think, as memory serves, it was a, a a small touch for Stekelenburg. So that's the anatomy of the goal. This is kind of, that's all the information we collect about it. There are different, different shots, different goals will have different bits of information, but that's what we know about this shot. And so we can then use that. We can put all of that information in, see you know, how likely was it that Iniesta would have scored that goal, a goal that ended up winning the World Cup. Now at this point, I guess a lot of you would like to see a bit more about how the numbers are collected, how they harvest the statistics during the game. 
and I actually spent an entire match day at Opta. I was able to watch them during the games, how they do it, how they interact with the commentators on TV. That's going to be in an upcoming video. But for now I thought I'd hear a bit more from Sam about what he does with the statistics after the game and maybe a bit more about that Andres Iniesta goal. To take you know, an example, we go back to the Iniesta one, the model that we've developed says that, okay, we, that chance was actually a really good chance for it as, as they go, it was about a 30% chance of being a goal before we know anything about where he even put it. Just to get the ball in that good a position off a counter-attack is, is a you know, very good chance of scoring. 30% obviously might not sound like that much, but an average shot's probably around 8 to 10%. So this is, a, this is a really good chance. But if we changed a few things, you know, if we moved him, if we took the shot back to here, you know, to the edge of the 18-yard box, and the shot was here, it goes from maybe 30% here down to about, I don't know, 12% or so, it drops to about there. Equally, if we, if we brought the shot inside, so he's got the full range of the goal to choose from, goes from 30%, but now goes, might go up to about as high as 50%. I've developed a model which takes into account all these kinds of factors about what we know about the shots. Because we've got such a huge backlog of, of shots and details of them, can you still enjoy watching a game of football? A absolutely. Um, more so. I think you look at things in a different way. You think about what, what players are doing and, and where they're doing it and how they're doing it and what, what does that lead to. And it, You still enjoy it and you still watch the game and, it, and it's still exciting. And when there's a great goal or a great save, you still kind of have the same reflex reactions to everything of, of excitement. But uh, you just think about the game in a slightly different way. But I, I think... For me, it's more fun. I think it's better, but you know, personal taste, I guess. I think the holy grail with with kind of football analytics and and you know what I'm doing and what a lot of other people are doing is I think you want to get to one number that broadly encapsulates that player um, and that player's value, or at least on pitch value. There are going to be other things, you know, age and contract, which obviously affect their value to a, an opposing team, but purely on what they do. Um, kind of value like you know baseball has wins above replacement and, and I think that's kind of uh, where I'm trying to take it I think probably other people are trying to do the same thing. This must be like the best job in the world. Yeah pretty much I, I mean I, I didn't want to say it in the interview but I, if they just gave me access to the database I'd have been pretty happy with that they didn't need to pay me but they, they seem to want to do that so that works for me. So thanks to the guys from Opta and a reminder we'll have another video soon where we go behind the scenes on match day which is far more exciting but for now thank you for watching and some more of the details about the statistics can be found on the blog.